Hi, Kevin. Yeah. Go. Oh. Uh, hi, Sophie. <laughs> hi. Hi. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I was distracted. I was just working on season three because I, I hear that that starts soon. I figure I've got like a couple of weeks. Season three of what? Season season three of our show, actually. So I know I'm really I'm really cutting it down on the wire, but I feel like in this last couple of weeks, I'm really going to pull the first episode together. But Kevin, season three starts today. S- this is a funny haha joke, Sophie, but I, I, I really got to get back to work. No. Kevin, right now, this is the first episode. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Hello, travelers. Welcome to the first episode of season three. Woo! All right. Uh, The good news is that was a bit. And so now we're here (laughs) and season three is well underway. And we have a couple pieces of news for you uh, before we begin our grand tale. News? What news, Kevin? So first off, merchandise. I think a lot of you already know this, but we do have an online store with DFTBA. Uh, if you just search for DFTBA, uh, the Penumbra podcast, you'll find us. Uh, and the reason I want to bring it up now is because we have some new items for you to check out if you haven't seen them already. We've just put socks on sale. The socks are so cool. They are wonderful. We've got Juno socks. We've got of socks. We've got purple Penumbra socks. Yes. We've got all the socks you could ever want so long as it's one of those three. <laughs> And we still have all the posters and season soundtracks and uh, T-shirts and pins that we've had forever. So go check those out. And because a lot of you have been asking, our most recent live show that happened over the summer, Juno Steel and the Train from Nowhere, will be going up on the DFTBA store. We are working on it right now, and we will let you know as soon as we have a definitive release date for that. The other piece of news that I wanted to give, another thing that people have been asking us for, is we have a P.O. Box address if you'd uh, like to send things our way. That address is P.O. Box 380829, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 02138. That's P.O. Box 380829, Cambridge, Mass, 02138. Please don't send anything creepy. Don't send anything creepy. And also a very specific request, please don't send food. And one more thing, I piloted a new program at the end of last season, and I've updated it and I'm continuing it with this season. So moving forward, the Penumbra will be offering ad space at the top of each episode to artists, creators, and businesses whose mission and values align with ours. If you are interested in sponsoring one or more episodes of the Penumbra, you can email cat, K-A-T, at thepenumbrapodcast.com for information on our rates and additional details. But for those who may not be able to afford a sponsorship, but would still like to advertise with the Penumbra, we are open to submissions for free, one-time ad spots. We are interested particularly in promoting LGBTQ and POC creators and business owners, small businesses, and groups that support workers' rights or the environment, though all submissions will be considered. Ads will be chosen very selectively and at our discretion. We reserve the right to put no ads in an episode if none of the current submissions fit our qualifications. To find out more details, you can go to thepenumbrapodcast.com slash contact. All right, Sophie, so what do you say? Are we ready for the episode? I feel like we've kept them waiting long enough. I don't know. I feel like I could riff for another 40 minutes. <laughs> oh, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you again, travelers, and enjoy. Ah, good evening, traveler, and welcome to the Penumbra. Tonight's tale is... Juno Steel and the Man in Glass. It's true what people say about the view from space. You look at how much there is out there, and you feel your own smallness in the face of it, sure, but you also feel the freedom of it. Infinite space means infinite room to move around. It means infinite possibility. Like, if you just looked long enough, you could eventually find anything. Even yourself. (laughs) Makes me feel a little silly for not leaving Mars earlier, honestly. I've been thinking a lot about that whole process finding myself, what I did during it, and I guess what I'm trying to say to you is... That's all very interesting, Juno, but does this really seem like the best time for this conversation? I... I mean, I guess not, but... Excellent! I agree. If we keep this streak of agreements up, perhaps we will work well together after all. 
but uh, didn't Buddy say that you had Now it appears they're checking identification by the door. Come along. Hey, uh, Ransom, wait up. Ah, oh, goddamn six-inch heels. He's been like this since yesterday. Whining, long-winded, hanging on me like creeping vines. And in fact, I'm beginning to grow concerned that he may have been like this since the day he was born. <sighs> Juno Steele. There is just no changing some people, is there? I know from experience that he's competent enough, and if this position in Buddy Orinko's criminal operation works out, well, good for him. I bear him no ill will. Who has the time? But I won't save him, either. Not like I have so often already. Because my name is Peter Ransom, for the time being. And I chose that moniker as a constant reminder of why I work alone. Years ago, a man told me that the first rule of thieving was to rely on those more skillful than yourself. And he was right. But he forgot the essential corollary to that advice. That if you attain enough skill, you need rely on no one. And why take that risk if you don't have to? I forgot that for a moment. But today I return to the fundamentals that made my criminal career so successful. I am alone. I will not forget that again. <sighs> Though Captain Buddy seems set on making that very difficult for me. She began that particular campaign this very morning. Juno, Ransom, you will find your disguises in your quarters. You have three hours to complete the heist before the estate security systems pick up on our ship. Treat this as a test, darlings. Nothing else we have planned matters if we cannot steal that map. No, no, even earlier, I think. Perhaps Captain Orinko's campaign against me began yesterday, 15 minutes after takeoff, when she gathered the full crew in the kitchen for our first... Family meeting. The first of many family meetings just like it. You should all be prepared for that. My criminal strategy needs a small and tight-knit crew. And so we will eat together, meet together, celebrate together, just like one big illegal family. A family? That's so sweet! Captain A can be the mom, and Mr. Jack can be the uncle, and Miss Vespa can be the angry mom, and... Question. And... In this scenario, am I the brother of Buddy or Vespa? The correct answer is neither. Well, aren't we all brothers in crime aboard the carte blanche jet? No, because some of us are not men, and also we are not related. Uh, they're already bringing us off track, buddy. We had to keel haul all three of them and keep going it alone. Hey, you want to lay off a little? We haven't even been here for an hour yet, and you've chewed us out like four times. What, are you keeping score? Yeah, actually, I like to keep my hands busy in meetings, and I had this little piece of paper, so Enough! I... All of you. That's enough. This is the other reason why I insist we think of ourselves as one unit. Because like a family, we may argue with one another, we may even come to blows, but we will grow closer until we can always rely on one another, even if you don't like the person you're relying on. <laughs> Good thing we don't have to worry about that! Now, I'm about to do something very important for you all. It is the greatest service my mother ever did me, and she did it every single morning when she woke me up for school. She burst my ego. <clears throat> Not one of you is half as good as you think you are. Not one. Hey, that's fun. You be quiet when Buddy is talking, got it? Vespa, dear, practice what you preach. Nobody aboard this ship is the best at what they do. Not one of us is even in the top 10,000 across the galaxy, I'd wager. And if you think Buddy Orenko couldn't get the best of the best if she wanted them, why, you've simply no idea who you're dealing with, darlings. But my system has never called for the best. Because if in order to be great, you must practice consistently, then in order to be the best, you must hold yourself away and practice your little heart out until your every ounce of empathy, charm, and wit has withered away to nothing. And I need that wit. I need that charm. And most of all, I need that empathy. And that is why you are here. An Orenko crime family is built on relationships. When we plan our operations, become not as individuals, but as specialized duos, trios, and always, implicitly, as a family. 
Each one of you has made the grade because you can already form one of those specialized groups with others here. Rita, darling. Yes, ma'am. Your work with Juno stretches back two decades. You are an extraordinarily effective hacker, and you have the patience of a saint. She's the patient one? In addition, Jet has followed your hacking portfolio for years now, Rita, and several of your most watched stream specials are based on his criminal history. You two are already great fans of one another. No way! Like, like, God in a laser flash? Was that about you? Yes. Saturnian save crackers? Black hole bandits? Indeed. Just dragons? The story of 100 dragons, but not any people? I'm afraid I don't recall. <laughs> Jet, in addition to Rita, has a proven history of success with myself, Vespa, and Juno. Vespa with Jet and myself, and Juno with everyone here except Vespa. Listen, I don't have a problem with her. It's the six-inch scar across my stomach that's a little worried. Make her put her knife away, and then we'll talk. I don't put away my knife. Oh, wow, Captain A. That's such a cool system. You should name it something like... Uh, like... Um, the buddy system? Uh, Vespa. Now that that's settled, are there any other questions? Oh, oh, uh, Captain A, you forgot about Agent... Um... What's Mr. Thief's name again? Exactly. exactly. I've said this already, but perhaps I spoke unclearly. If you need something to call me, then Peter Ransom will do just fine. That was not Rita's question. Our crime family is small because that is how you make every bond count. The relationships we've come here with are only a start. One of our very first priorities as a crew will be to build those yet unbuilt. And that brings me to my first two commands as head of this operation. Well then. Let's get to business, hmm? About time. First, I will be taking Rita out for ice cream tonight, and none of you are invited. What? 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 Oh, boy, oh, boy! It embarrasses me that I don't already hold a close relationship with everyone on my crew, and so I think we ought to fix this one tonight. I'll see you at 8 o'clock in the garage. I know an asteroid with the best soft serve in Seoul. We'll take the car. The Ruby 7 is not ready. The other car. Aye, aye, Captain. Charming. If I may, Captain Orinko, you did not mention me as one of your associates either. Perhaps I could... I'm so sorry, but our get-together will have to wait for another time. You and Juno are going to be very busy tonight. (coughs) The hell? It's it's not... We're... (laughs) I'm afraid I don't catch your meaning, Captain. That is my second order. Our first heist is tomorrow, and you two are going in alone. You'll have to prepare. Tomorrow? Just the two of us. I hope that won't be a problem, Ransom. You did promise me that you had someone you worked well with. It's the only reason I took your application seriously, if you recall. Of course there's no problem. One day is just less time to prepare than I would like. Boo-hoo. But I will excel regardless. <coughs> hey, wait a minute, yes, hold you on. Know? <coughs> is there something you think I ought to know? Gotta say, for two old friends, you two don't seem so friendly. You've barely even looked at each other. A resume is a difficult thing to write when none of your work has been tied to the same identity. Therefore, when I applied to work on Buddy Orinko's crew, I knew I would need a reference, someone with a name and a track record who could vouch for the nameless thief. Hence, Juno Steele. But then, while Juno choked over his coffee, while he cast that soft, confused eye my way, I realized the significant difference between a man and a resume. A man can elaborate. And if Juno mentioned the embarrassment of our final encounter, if he called into question my only connection to this ring of thieves, my time in the Orinko family might be short indeed. (laughs) You see my face, Vespa? I'd barely even look at me, too. (laughs) His gaze passed me by. I considered thanking him for that later, then folded the thought away. My concerns are about you, buddy. Because you're already talking about our first job, but you haven't said a word about this big con you have us after, and the big guy told me, you know, he promised me that... That you would know the full scope of each job we do. Of course. I'm happy to explain my larger plan right now, if you'd like. Along with all four major crimes that will lead to it. It's terribly exciting. You might want to put that coffee down for a moment, darling. You might choke again. I think I know how to drink my coffee, thanks. Of course. What we're after is well hidden, Juno. And before the way will open to us, we must hold four items in our possession. The map, the key, the blade, and the book. Wow. 
That sounds like a fairy tale. Oh, it's much better than that, darling. We're going to steal a legend. And now I'll tell you everything about it. <clears throat> Somewhere in the far reaches of the outer rim... A great thief once taught me never to let the larger picture distract you from what really matters, the current job. Rule one of thieving. Even if you're after the royal jewels, don't think about the queen. Think only about the one guard that holds the key and how you're going to get your hand in his pocket. <laughs> uh, stopped clock is right twice a day, as they say. Four times on Venus. Never understood how to read those. <clears throat> Regardless, I honestly don't care what Orinko plans to steal. I know only two things. That our targets will be very, very valuable and that I need a lot of money quickly. Extremely quickly. But that isn't relevant either. Not at this moment. So I'll take my debts, and I'll take Buddy's ultimate goals, and I'll fold them neatly in my mind, and I'll file them away under for future consideration. So I spend the night researching our mark. I apply my face, remove it, apply again. My preparation takes longer than it once did, to shake the sleep and smooth the skin, but it has never served me wrong. Then morning arrives, and the job begins. Juno, Ransom, have you made your grand entrance yet? Nearly. The line at the entrance is extensive. It'd move faster if they let us go through more than two at a time. That, darling, is what we call a red carpet bottleneck. When you reach a certain level of fame or wealth, you forget completely how to enter a room any other way than with a twirl, three bows, and a herd of paparazzi drooling at your feet. And everyone at a Nova Zolotov gala crossed that threshold years ago. Plenty other thresholds around here. Can't we just skip this part, take the side door or something? No. Everyone is taking the red carpet. We'll have to blend in if we want a clean escape from this place. Do I look like I'm blending into you? I've seen suns less bright than the gown Buddy threw at me. All camouflage, darling. If you need to hide something dark, you do it in the shadows. If you need to hide a parrot, you do it in a clown. I never said I look like a clown. I hate to interrupt, Captain Orinko, but we're nearly at the front of the line. Excellent. You remember the plan? Sorta. Every word. Good. Then I'm ceasing communications in case anyone is monitoring for comms calls. I'll see you when you have the map in hand. Good luck. Luck will have nothing to do with it. I have memorized every word of Buddy's plan, along with every square foot of Novozolotov's satellite estate. I prepared just as i have been taught to, and I would excel. Our target awaits at a charity auction being held by trillionaire art collector Novozolotov. Disguised as Outer Rim newlyweds, Buddy's idea, of course. I would never reuse a cover story so flippantly. We are to enter the gala, participate in the auction, and buy an irreplaceable work of art with nothing in our wallets but a mirage. <laughs> First, Rita will hack our aliases onto the guest list. Those, at least, I was allowed to choose. Dauphin, Dauphin... Ah, there you are. And have you cleared an account for purchases this evening? Zolotov has attempted to heighten security at this event, partly by ensuring that his guests keep as little money on their person as possible. Fewer creds in the building should mean fewer thieves at the door. As such, all creds intended for auction purchases are called in through cleared accounts managed by Zolotov. It's an interesting concept, and certainly not one I'd heard of at this scale. Very flashy. But our hacker made short work of it. Of course we have an account. It's right here. Oh, you don't have to show me your... Oh. That's... sizable. You're damn right it is. Delightful. Now, may we... Oh, Right. Monsieur and Madame Dauphin. And I am certain this will work. Positive of our success on absolutely every variable, except one. Juno Steele, whose stealth leaves something to be desired. It is not just that he flashes our fake money to the guard at the door. When we walk the carpet into the gala... He attempts a turn and trips, actually trips, for everyone to see. Uh, oh. <laughs> Pre pretty smooth, right? Even his smile is unbefitting for a thief. It's so naive. With every flicker of feeling, that smile shifts, daring a confident second in the sun, then hiding away behind his lips, then peeking again. You can read a man's soul with a smile like that, can... 
see his every hope and fear and love and <clears throat> fold it away file under for future consideration and for now as we enter the golden hall where today's auction will take place surrounded on all sides by paintings and tapestries that are each worth more than the entire ship we now call home I will focus on the task at hand and I will ensure that Juno does the same <sighs> You see this thing we're here to steal yet? In due time, dear, in due time. And perhaps we shouldn't say that word so loudly, hmm? Fine, that map we're here to steal. Sorry, I didn't know you were such a stickler for specifics. We must be careful. We will not be the first thieves to steal from Mr. Zolotov. You don't say. Nova Zolotov's past parties have been legendary, June. One part priceless art and nine parts priceless mind-altering substances. The ultra-rich across the galaxy clamor for invitations just so they can drink and snort and inject so much that they can't remember a second of the parties they want so badly to attend, all of which makes them excellent prey for thieves. Right, and that's why security is so intense at this thing. Zolotov must be spooked or something, because nobody's seen him since he got smashed and grabbed a year ago. <laughs> the guy that hungry for the spotlight stays out of it for a year, he must be pretty shook up. Precisely. Uniformed guards at every corner. Solotov isn't hiding his anxiety, that's for sure. Looks like he's showing it off. Okay, so where do we start? Auction begins in one hour. Hmm. Well, I think that we should start by lying low until that hour is over and then proceeding with our original plan. Sure, obviously. Between but my experience and the diameter of your gown, I think I'm likely better suited to case the room. So I will seek out the map we're after, confirm our points of exit, and scope out the other guests for firearms. That's a lot. What am I supposed to do? Not draw attention to yourself. Enjoy a refreshment, perhaps. Silence. Okay, funny joke, but seriously. Look for Zolotov, if you like. You have the photo of him, yes? Just look for the man with the terrible haircut. <laughs> yeah, what even is that? Looks like a lion and a wet cockatiel had a really ugly... Goodbye. But hang on, what am I supposed to do when I find him? Him. It does not matter whether Juno finds our host, but at least the attempt will keep him occupied for a while. To a pickpocket, the crowd offers a freedom as easy as swimming. People flow past your limbs. Your fingertips brush purse clasps when they please. It is invisibility moving like that. Weightlessness. And oh, how I've missed that solitude already. Out in the crowd, I confirm that the security guard's firearms are useless, only decorations to elaborate costumes. Then I find our target. The gilded globe of Reaches Far is the most valuable treasure map in the solar planets for more than one reason. It is small enough to hold in the palm of one hand, but completely golden and studded with intricately carved gems. Just looking at it, I can feel old habits work in my fingertips. The desire to pluck it and disappear out some window slick as shadow. <sighs> But this alone could not settle my debts. My time is running out. And I am thinking this, feeling my age upon me like an ever-growing weight. File that under for future consideration while you're at it. When I see Juno across the ballroom, a vision in gold and light, breaking the only rule I gave him. <laughs> My dear Miss Dauphin, I do not think I've ever laughed so vigorously at one of these stuffy parties in my life. That's madam to you, lady. Lady? <laughs> With a sneer, no one's ever talked to me that way. Madam, you are a cad and a card, and if you keep this going, you might just be my new best friend. Juno is flirting. He's picked up some long-haired, claw-nailed young woman in the crowd, and he's putting on a face I've never seen from him before, cocky and confident, looking her up and down when she turns away. I don't have time to be livid. I allow myself a few seconds of it anyway before I shout, Dear? Dear? Hey, and there he is now. <laughs> the mysterious monsieur. Well, now... It sure seems like gowns are not all you have good taste in. How much would you like for the sharp-faced man in the window? I've been thinking of picking one up just like him. Toss me half what I paid and we'll call it even. <laughs> oh, you are a wicked woman, madam. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my love. May I speak with you a moment? Just a sec. Come over here, Toots. I got somebody I want you to meet. Toots! 
<laughs> you will say anything, won't you, Dolphin? It's urgent! Oh, now he's mad! Why'd you have to go and make him mad, you bad, bad madam? Maybe we knock that price down to a third of the gown instead. At a price like that, dear, I'd be an asteroid farming fool not to pick him up. You must bring him back to me once you've wiped that pout off his face. Sure, I... You must. Uh... I'll have my checkbook ready. Just give me a number. Uh, uh, okay. I'll, uh, get on that. <laughs> what in the hell do you think you're doing? Having a drink, like you told me. And her? She came with the drink. Unbelievable. Listen, I get that you're the master thief here. Do you get that? Do but you? You're not really giving me anything to work with. I did. I told you not to draw attention to yourself. I told you. So what do you think? I was just goofing off or something? I was doing my job. Which is what, exactly? Attention, yes. Attention. We will now begin tonight's auction. If you would all kindly take a seat before the main Never stage, mind. we can begin. Let's find seats quickly, Thank not you. in the back. Far too obvious. Thank you. We move to our seats, and whatever my frustrations, at least our job is nearly over. Whatever Juno's mistakes, we will buy this globe and we will leave immediately. But still, the way he was staring at that woman, hardly blinking. He nearly jeopardized our work, our freedom, so he could talk to a pretty face in the crowd. The nerve of it, the unmitigated... (sighs) But I am a professional, and I file my frustrations under for future consideration. Will you listen to me? I'm trying to tell you that... now, dear guests, if I may present our host... Shh! This must be Zolotar. Rejoining us after a year in solitude, the one... Nova Zolotovna! Charm, dear sure. That woman you were talking to is... Yup, our mark, like I was trying to tell you. That's right, my friends, that's right. I've spent the last year hiding away thinking about me, about who I am, about what I want, about the man I'm going to marry any day now, just as soon as I find whatever nebula he's hiding in and drag him away from it. And now, I've been drifting out among you all night, secret as the smile on a star, just to see how you all liked my little shindig. But now I'm ready, after a whole year in the cocoon, to show you the beautiful butterfly I've become! It doesn't look anything like the person in the photos Buddy gave us. That's probably because My great transformation! The metamorphosis that nobody expected, the change that shows the real me, as I always was... I get a haircut, y'all! Oh, yes, a haircut. I see it now. That is good. Way better, right? But enough of that little old me. What do you say we begin the sharing? She says she changed her last name because of some tradition on Earth. Must be really confusing (laughs) changing your name every time you get a haircut. Why didn't you tell me who she was? Uh, because you didn't let me. This is the first I've heard of Juno Steele needing permission to speak. Listen, Ransom, what the hell is your problem right now? No, scratch that. I know what your problem is, so don't you feel like we should talk about it? Is there a reason you only bring this up when it's most inconvenient, Juno? Find me one convenient time, then. One, because we're both clearly distracted. Perhaps we wouldn't be if one of us wasn't so distracting. Gilded globe of reaches far, dating back to the earliest caravans to the Outer Rim, with alterations placed by master craftsmen in all the years since. See the color of the jewels that mark the planets, each pure as the star was born from. See how all those styles of circuit work dance across the face, like a beautiful socialite with a new haircut at her wedding ball, which should be any little old day now. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But... This is for charity. So the show goes on. Let's place the first bid at one million credits. So you gonna bid anytime soon? Or? Delightful. You have to bicker even at the most important moment in our world. The, the pinnacle of piracy, this Madame Dauphin. It's my first day on the goddamn job, all right? And oh, but it shows. You want to lay off, pal? I'm laying on because you've made this job a disorganized that disaster. Fine. You want to get out of here? Then let's get out of here. Five hundred million credits. <gasps> Oh, oh my, that is a jump of 488 million creds to the charming Madame Dauphin. That is every cred we have. What are you doing? Oh, whatever. It's not even real money. 500 million. That's 500. Going once. Let's just pick the damn thing up and leave. Going twice. Can't resist. I've been one billion creds for my gilded globe. What? what? Oh, that gave me the vapor something powerful. Odd 
auction so exciting. One billion. That's bad. How do we get more money in the account, like now? Call the captain quickly. Well, anybody want to match that, Madame Dauphin? Come on, come on, Rita. Rita, I told you to call the captain. Well, the captain would just put Rita on the line, all right? This is faster. I'm a lover's quarrel, but... Oh, I, I almost forgot. Go in once. Hi, Rita's room. This is Rita. Rita, quick, I need you to hack another billion creds into our account. Go in twice. Billion? I can and try And sold to the charming little lady from the middle of nowhere, Neptune Nova Zolotovna. Boss? Never mind, we'll figure it out. Uh, don't tell Buddy. <laughs> oh, there is nothing that makes you feel more alive than spending ten figures in one go. I'm sweating like a hog sunbathing in a supernova. <laughs> Well, so this uh, isn't great. No, dear detective, I'm afraid it isn't great. But resentment is not the current job, so I will fold it up and I will file it away. Because the future can wait. That is all the future is, in fact. Moments in wait, time whose time has not yet come. And in fact, if you are disciplined enough, the future can wait indefinitely. The present is what presses. And in the present, I must steal a socialite's favorite possession out from under a thousand noses, all while having to babysit a loud-mouthed criminal novice named Juno... <sighs> For future consideration. For future consideration. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one, with co-creators Sophie Kaner and actors Joshua Elon and Noah Sives. I mean, with the exception of, you know, during the live show and, right. and in the, the Christmas episode for right. about two seconds. But, right. but yeah, functionally, I haven't recorded as this character in two years. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me, it was, it was I, I, I love playing her. I have, it yeah. is wonderful to come back to him. It's like sliding on an old slipper. Just, just one? one, though. Just one. Just one. I hate that just so much. Just on one old Oh my slipper. god, your other foot. Was already in a slipper. Honestly, <laughs> when you're... Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, pins, and socks your hearts desire. Just go to DFTBA.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski, Lazling Voss, Lynn Go, Juno Kant Jop, NB Shaper, Jasper James, Kaylee Byers, Jameson Green, Amelia Phelps, Caroline Seidman, Jay Ochoa, Marielle Madden, Red L, Sophia Anderson, Izzy J, Kim Dauber, Ota Arcana, Garrett M, Jay Yanazelli, Karen ZH, Reagan, Kim Zygen, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. This tale, Juno Steel and the Man in Glass, was told by the following people. Noah Symes as Peter Ransom, Joshua Elon as Juno Steel, Alexander Munoz as Nova Zolotovna, Sarah Gazdovich as Buddy, Chloe Cunha as Vespa, Alexander Stravinsky as Jet, and Kate Jones as Rita. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid that is our time for today, dear travelers. We hope you will join us again soon. <laughs>